All right, Fish TV from MetLife Stadium here wrapping up. Kevin Fitzgerald and Andrew Cannell. Let's be going out on the field today. 42-29, Syracuse lost to USC this afternoon and well into the night as well. Big weather delay, big, big storm delay, and, well, really the only, big, the only storm out on the field was Matt Barkley. He throws for six touchdowns today. and A, a lot to go over, Cannell, and I think a, a lot that you can take away from, from this performance uh, from Syracuse today was I think there's definitely some moral victories you can take. Well, I know nobody likes to. You know, pick on the moral victories when you're going up against the number two team in the nation. It was a 13-point loss. The offense showed some some good stretches throughout the day, but everyone seemed pretty confident after this game. And the pressers and players were talking. Everybody seemed like they had accomplished something against this team. Yeah, I would say so. I would agree with that. Doug Marone's attitude after the game was was very intriguing, interesting to me. Just uh, the dichotomy between being sort of satisfied in a sense with, with mm -hmm. what they were able to accomplish today with a lot of the things that the, the players were doing out there and just saying that this is a program going in the right direction. But also, you know Doug Marone hates to lose. So it was that you know, duality between him being happy with his team in a certain right. sense but also just being flat out pissed off because his team lost, and you know, regardless of whether it's against the number two team in the country or against Stony Brook coming up next week, Doug Marone is not a man who likes to lose, and he showed it after the game. So yes, there was some belief there between Doug Marone and the players in moral victories. However, most of them were still pretty upset to lose this game because they felt like they left some plays out there in the field. I think someone else is going to be upset is Lane Kiffin. I mean, we got to say this USC team. Yeah, they put up 42 points. Probably didn't look as sharp as they. I would have hoped to look uh, and really didn't play as crisp as their week one win last week against Hawaii. I mean, there were chances in the first half when Syracuse could really could have taken advantage of some penalties, some miscues, and some, uh, some turnovers as well from this USC squad. I think the first half they had a chance to really open this up and kind of close the gap. They went into the first half, they went into half, it was a 14-3 deficit, but I think in the first half Syracuse had a chance to, I guess, really get things going a little bit better than just three points and maybe open up the offense a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Syracuse definitely could have taken advantage of how USC played early on a lot more. USC yeah. was not crisp at all today. They did not look like even close to the best team in the country or the number two team in the country. Uh, defensively, Syracuse hung in there, especially how long they had to be out in the field in the first half. But just early on, I mean, they did so later, but offensively they just they just could not score on USC. Didn't have the same crispness on offense compared to last week with Northwestern, and that's what's going to be frustrating to, to Doug Marone, Ryan Ness, and, and the rest of this, this Syracuse team after the game. They could not take advantage of USC not being very sharp. Yeah, they couldn't really get 42-29 loss here at MetLife. And one thing I want to finish up with is, is obviously last week you saw that fast-paced offense. You saw it was very quick. Nassman Company, they took a lot of shots downfield, whether that did lead to big plays or penalties that would extend drives. Did not see a lot of that today. Obviously, it's a much sharper defense than USC, but even as, as the game progressed in the second half, it seemed like as the game went on, they took less and less chances downfield and became, I guess, a little more restrained with that playbook, it, they said, especially in the second half. I mean, I don't know if I would take as much issue with the playbook as you would. Maybe it's just a product of the USC secondary being a little bit more challenging than a Northwestern secondary. That's probably one of the worst if you if you want to look at all the FBS teams in the nation. Yeah. Have pretty much no experience coming back there with Northwestern. Syracuse passed all over them. Overall, in the second half, I mean, I'd be pretty satisfied with what Syracuse was able to do on offense. Maybe more just the uh, the wide receivers. Not as much whether you're planning to pass downfield or not, but. Besides Marcus Sales, the wide receivers just didn't quite bring it like they did last week. Alec Lemon was eh in his return from an injury. But, you know, besides Marcus Sales, the production, the consistency wasn't quite there from the Syracuse wide receiving court. Yeah, and they fell behind early, and they lost this one 42-29. They fought hard. It was a tough, it was a tough game. Could take some big, you know, moral victories out of this one. Signing off here, Fizz TV from MetLife. We'll see you next week. This is Andrew Cadell. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald.